Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're doing some video editing. Uh, this is a section of my latest vlog, episode two. Some people were asking how I did the intro sequence. So uh, let's have a look and then I'll explain how I did it. So I shot this with the slow-mo mode on my iPhone. The thing is when you bring in that footage to Reaper, it's just going to play it back at its original, same as real life play rate. So it's 240 frames per second. I'm playing it back at 30, but because of the way Reaper handles frame rates, it just looks exactly the same as it originally was. So here's the same thing, uh, but played at normal speed. And if we look at item properties, it uh, or source properties, it is 240 frames per second. It's 720p, and my project settings are 30 and 1080. What I did to accomplish that slowdown effect in Reaper is to use stretch markers on the item. There are a few different ways to do this, but I found that stretch markers work really well because I wanted a gradual slowdown and then a build back up and I wanted the audio to follow that as well. So I'm gonna zoom in here, and there is a stretch marker at the start of the slowdown, so that's at the default value. The next one, a little while later, is at 0.08x, so that's super, super slowed down. And because this is a high frame rate file, that's not a problem at all. It doesn't look choppy or anything like that. And if I was starting with a 30 frames per second clip and then bringing it down to that, it would just look like a still image. Um, there would be, There's no information between frames, so it's just going to look really choppy. It's not going to work at all. You can slow things down, but not much more than like 0 0.9. And this is 0 0.08. So big difference in the amount that you can actually stretch things. And then I had another marker where I wanted to end. So uh, to do something similar to that. All right, so the car starts around here. I'm going to insert a stretch marker there. Um, add grouping off so my audio didn't follow that. But turning grouping on, add in a stretch marker there. I want it to slow down here, so I'll put in a stretch marker. And I want it to end by here, so I'll put in a stretch marker there. If we look at the cursor, there's an up and down arrow and a left and right arrow. So we want it on up and down. We're going to need to alt drag. Drag that down nice and slow, really low number. Oops. It's changed the play rate of both of those items. Changes the length of the item as well. And then we just crop that. All right, so let's see what we got. So that's pretty similar to what I used in the vlog. Unlike envelopes, where you have a lot more control over the curve between the points, um, stretch marker rate is linear curve only. If we look at the audio clip, there's one thing that I did to make the sound drop down in pitch. And that's uncheck this option, preserve pitch when changing rate. So when that's on, it's going to sound totally different. It's going to keep it the same tonality as the original clip. So let's play that back. It doesn't sound very good. It doesn't give you that slow-mo effect. So turning that off, hitting apply, playing. Now the next thing is the title. How do I make that title scroll across? So what's actually going on here is an empty MIDI item. So I'm just command dragging to create an empty MIDI item. When you have no items selected, it's going to just draw in an empty MIDI item. You could also make a time selection, go to the, go to the insert menu and a new MIDI item. 
I use empty MIDI items because they have an effects chain. That's the main reason that I like to use these and because of that shortcut to quickly draw one in. I have my effects browser docked here. I can grab the video processor and drag it on there. And here's my effects chain for this item. I'm going to bring in my text overlay with drop shadow preset for the video processor. Can't remember if I have shared this before, but this is the one that I use whenever I need a drop shadow. Essentially, all this is doing is duplicating the text with uh, a slight offset. It's uh, three pixels to the right, three pixels down, and then it's, it's going to be a, a darker color. So we put in our text. So Reaper log episode two. And we want this to be road rage. That's the uh, font that I used. And sometimes you can add in a tab there and it'll look a little bit better. Not sure if that's what I did with the original one, but if you want it to be more centered, uh, hit the tab key and it'll space it out. Um, so we have to turn on the drop shadow by turning that up. And if we scroll in here, you can see just a little bit of a black outline and without doesn't really pop out of the screen. Turn on the drop shadow, we'll increase the text size a little bit. And there was something I needed to do kind of manually to get this movement to work. That is exposition. So if I drag this all the way to the lowest value, it's still halfway on the screen. I have to edit this script to make that work. So I'm changing the minimum value, which is the second parameter here. First is the default position second one is the lowest value. The third one is the highest value. Fourth one is the, the center position. And then the last one is uh, the resolution of the knob. So to make this so that it starts off the screen and ends off the screen, you're going to have to raise those minimum and maximum values. So minus 1.5 should work and 2.5. I think that's what I did. The amount that you need to tweak these numbers is going to change based on um, how long the text is that you're scrolling. So I'm going to bring this X position all the way to the bottom and get my start point set up. I'm going to go to parameter, last touch parameter was X position, and we're going to show that uh, media item take envelope. If that drops in an envelope, it's down here at the bottom. And I'm going to draw in the uh, the curve uh, to be the same. At this middle position, I want that to be at 0 0.5, or the middle position. And then it's going to continue uh, to the end. Now let's look at this with a linear curve to see how that text looks. That's not quite right. For the effect that I want, I want an extra point. So we want it to be a complete stop just for a moment. And we can click and drag to move these around anywhere we like. The other thing we need to do is to set this to a slow start end shape. And this point as well. I use that one a lot. I think it's a really natural looking curve. That's pretty much how I uh, went about doing that. It took a lot less time to actually edit that. It takes a lot longer to do this when you're explaining it to actually do it on your own. It's not something that's going to take you probably more than two minutes. You'll probably preview the, the same five seconds over and over and keep tweaking things. And that's the time consuming part. Actually setting it up is not that hard. And so that's how you do that slow-mo effect. You must start with a high frame rate clip or else it's not going to work. Add in your stretch markers for your in and out and your center position. Add in your text. Use a bit of automation to make it interesting. And there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.